Um, you may know me from doing a podcast called Wikipedia Weekly once in a while. I also have written a book about Wikipedia. And today I'm just going to tell you a little bit about some of the um, research we've been doing about conflict of interest policy across different language editions. And I'm going to put my non-neutral hat on for a second. I think this is the perfect reason why Wikimania, Wikimania as being a multilingual international conference is so valuable because by my talking about this in this room of folks here, you can probably solve more problems for me in 10 minutes than I could in 10 weeks of research on this because I'll be asking you to give me feedback on how we've done the survey of COI policy analysis across the top 25 most active Wikipedia editions out there. So I really appreciate any feedback that you can give me. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go through this pretty quick so we have time primarily for you to give me feedback on this. So although I'm a native English speaker, I'm trying to slow down. So anytime I talk too quickly, feel free to raise your hand and tell me to slow down or to repeat anything that I say up here. So let me just give you some background on where, how we got to this point. In Wikimania 2014 in London, we had a really well attended session called We Need to Talk About Paid Editing, sorting out Wikipedia's most enduring argument. And the primaries on this project or this movement are myself and William Butler right there. He's not here, unfortunately, he couldn't make it, but he's my kind of co-PI on this project. You may know him as the Wikipedian, as a blogger, and also he runs a consulting business around Wikipedia, but he doesn't directly edit Wikipedia on behalf of his paying clients. So he's very well versed in the boundaries between being a participant in Wikipedia and how far do you go as a paid advocate for content in Wikipedia. So we had this session at London Wikimania where we actually had folks from the PR industry attend, we had folks from from French and Italian Wikipedia to talk about the different policies in different Wikipedia editions about paid editing. You can always go back to that um, session. We have it video, uh, video recorded online and the slides are online too. Later the next year, we were at the uh, very prestigious South by Southwest conference to talk about this to a wider audience, not just Wikipedians, and it was called Paid Editing, Getting Past Gotcha with the knowledge that there are a lot of attendees to the South by Southwest conference in Austin, Texas that had no clue about Wikipedia, but were PR professionals, communications professionals, or dot-com professionals, and they just want to learn more about the norms within Wikipedia. In the midst of all of this, myself and Bill Butler and a bunch of the PR companies came together, and actually in the United States, we came up with an agreement called the PRCOM agreement, where all the major PR companies in the United States and some internationally agreed to have a hands-off policy on directly editing Wikipedia on behalf of their paying clients. That's a pretty huge step if you think about it. So that was the fo big folks like Edelman Worldwide, um, all the big PR uh, companies agreed that they would not edit Wikipedia directly on behalf of paying clients. And that's a huge win. So most of our crises, at least in English Wikipedia, come from small firms, boutique firms, individual consultants, because the big guys, we've consulted with them, we've given them ground, I won't say ground rules, but, but you know, guidelines on how to best conduct themselves in Wikipedia. In English Wikipedia, we've been pretty successful. So our question was, what does this look like in other language editions of Wikipedia? And then last year in Mexico City, we had a discussion around the same type of issues, um, around conflict of interest. All right, so the motivation for the survey was that we had anecdotal evidence. We presented in 2014 with the French and Italian Wikipedians. We kind of knew that the German Wikipedians allowed for companies to register accounts and to edit on behalf of companies. In English Wikipedia, that's a no-no. So we always said, it was really interesting, what if we could get a broad spectrum view of what the different Wikipedia editions look like. So we wanted to do a formal study of the COI policies across languages. So this is just the initial work that we had in this area. So the first thing I did was look at the 25 most active Wikipedia editions. I used that very specifically because editions that were in the top 25 but had significant bot edits and didn't have as busy uh, active community folks you know, might go down on this list. But conveniently, if you look at the 25 most active Wikipedia editions by number of active users, they're all 1,000 active users or greater. The cutoff of 1,000, below 1,000 is 26, 27, 28. So it was almost perfect that the top 25 most busy or active Wikipedia editions all were in the top 25, uh, that had 1,000 editors. So this is just the details when we did the snapshot last year. And then what I did was I just generally went to st the starting point of English Wikipedia's COI page and looked at the interwiki links. 
what other language pages were linked off of the English language Wikipedia's conflict of interest page. That's not a perfect thing, but it's a good starting point. And then I start try to look at other editions in terms of their pages around terms of use. Did they mention the new Wikimedia Foundation terms of use? Because individual Wikipedia editions can, in fact, reject the general Wikimedia Foundation's terms of use for editing Wikipedia, right? And then the other thing was, was there a statement or clause around uncontroversial edits? Now, you all probably know that there's no such thing as an uncontroversial edit in Wikipedia, but in general, there's this classification of if you're just correcting a date, like 1971 to 1972, and you can prove it, that's kind of seen as an uncontroversial edit. On the other hand, if you're going to the global warming article and changing the lead sentence, that's probably going to be pretty controversial, right? So some editions have a statement about uncontroversial edits, and they'll actually invite conflicted editors, quote unquote, to actually change those things in Wikipedia. And then finally, we just tried to find the links to the policy pages. And in fact, we saw that some editions, like Japanese, um, had no real policy page around COI in terms of use. And that'd be interesting to find. Uh, find out why that is. But in general, we did some initial research, and then we realized we really do need to make a big survey to ask specific experienced Wikipedians in those communities to answer these questions for us. This actually took a lot longer than we thought. What are the relevant questions you can ask an experienced Wikipedia editor in another language and have them still stay around to answer all the questions? Like, we knew that we had this 15 to 20 minute window, and if it was longer than 20 minutes, people would probably abandon the whole survey saying, this is taking up too much time, right? So to shave that survey down to a concise set of questions was really important to us. So I posted this into the Wikipedia Weekly Facebook group, and I encourage any of you to join that group. It's a very active, lively group of folks who discuss things. And some people gave me really good feedback in the last few days on this, but let me just show you some of the initial results. Or let, you, let me show you the survey. So it's actually a Google form. And you can go in, and some of the basic questions, I know it's a little bit too small for you to see back there. But just, you know, how would you like to identify yourself? Username or real name? Um, what was the uh, beginning month and year you started editing Wikipedia? What kind of focus do you have in Wikipedia? So let me just show you some of the more important ones here. Does, or do you have guidelines relating to conflict of interest in your focus language? Does the guideline allow, encourage, discourage, prohibit, or make no reference to directly editing Wikipedia, right? So unfortunately, some of these may or may not work in terms of translation, right? These are very specific English terms. Um, they might have different meaning in other languages. So this is already quite a flawed survey if you're doing it multilingual, um, but it's a starting point. Some other questions that we asked were, does the guideline allow, encourage, um, discourage, prohibit when it comes to a paid COI. So there's COI and then there's if you're paid for those edits and some editions have different policies for those things. So let me just get to some of the later questions here. And again, I'm gonna give you a link to the survey at the end. So if any of you here wanna take it or know of someone who can help us with the languages that we're missing, I would really appreciate it. Um, please quote relevant parts of the guideline that applies to usernames referencing a company or organization or affiliation. Um, so this goes on and hopefully you know, people will make it to the end of the 36 questions that are here. There's some branching here, right? So if you actually go to one question and you say no, you might not have to answer three or four questions in this survey. But the end here, it says, please explain any major controversies in your own words with links to media coverage to any type of, you know, conflicts. And we thought this was quite useful because a lot of the changes in English Wikipedia policy only come when the mainstream media makes a big deal out of it. And then Wikipedians go, oh my god, that's embarrassing. Let's go change our policy, right? So we wanted to see if the same dynamic held in other languages where mainstream media coverage of what was going on in terms of a paid editor or paid editing scandal had any impact on your communities. And then finally, have these controversies resulted in legal actions or threats or legal uh, or legal actions, and then are you aware of any state, national, regional laws that impact this editing? So another one of our uh, trains of thought was that why do American companies not get to edit Wikipedia while in European languages there's a, more of a tendency to allow corporate accounts to be registered, and maybe this has something to do with that. So those are the overall questions, and I'm going to give you a link so you can look at all the questions in detail. Even if you're not sure you can answer all the questions, even if you can go through them and just give us feedback on whether you think those are the appropriate questions to ask, that has been very valuable to us. So let me give you some examples of what we found so far. Um, as I said, we're looking at the top 25 most active editions. These are them, English, German, Spanish, French, Japanese, Russian, and at the 
at the tail end here, Finnish, Vietnamese, Norwegian, in terms of active editors. Everyone knows that Finnish and Norwegian are quite big in terms of size, but active editors, they're actually you know, about 1,000 to 1,500. So the process, as we said, we had initial discussions, compiled questions. We tried to identify these people that I knew, or Bill Butler knew, or we left messages on people's talk pages. Response rate was OK, but we were looking for more. So these are the folks that we received responses from. Um, and we'd like to find more data points for these languages as well. But we're still looking for participants in Spanish, Russian, Portuguese, Polish, Dutch, Turkish, Hebrew, Swedish, Indonesian. Revo, I'm looking at you back there. Uh, Finnish, Norwegian. So I think we could probably finish this entire list with everyone in this room practically. So that's the good news, right? So what are some things that we found so far? Well, there's kind of three basic bins that this breaks down into. One is that you have Wikipedia editions that just said, oh, English Wikipedia, they seem to know what they're doing. Copy over English language guidelines. That seems pretty obvious to a lot of folks. Um, and then you have guidelines that are developed in a different direction. You know, for, for communities that were big enough probably to have lots of deliberation and lots of thoughtful discourse and to take on either a national or cultural character, they actually have different directions in terms of their COI conflict of interest policies. And then you have folks have no guidelines whatsoever. Like, it's not a big deal. We really don't have detailed descriptions of what's going on, right? Um, where, when there were COI rules, we found these patterns. Disclosure is a must, so this is a big one. If they had a COI policy in these language editions, they said disclosure, number one. Which shouldn't be surprised because we really like transparency in Wikimedia movement, right? Um, there were, most of these, a, an exemption or a special case for Wikipedians and residents or GLAM entities. So then we, we were trying to also look for other folks who have policies that are not as well developed as other languages to see you know, what are the trends in those areas. Okay, so what kind of bright lines do we see uh, in terms of you know, absolute uh, boundaries on editing Wikipedia? Some are saying it's just prohibited. So we saw that in Arabic and Korean Wikipedia. Discouraged, we saw that in Chinese, Catalan, and Farsi. Allowed, but discouraged, French and Ukrainian. Um, allowed, but with some caveats there, Italian and German. And then, I hate to say it, but English is just eh? unclear. Like, it <laughs> depends. If you listen to Jimmy, it's pretty bright. If you look at the policy, it ain't so bright. So there's different ways to interpret the English one, right? That's unfortunate, but that's the truth of the matter. Um, so what are some of the challenges of the survey? Conflicting answers from multiple respondents, conflicting answers from even one correspondent, right? So you might have someone who answered it one way in one part of the survey, then later on there seems to be an answer that contradicts the first part, but we don't have a process to follow up with them to resolve those conflicts. So maybe that's a flaw in our survey, we're not sure. Uh, conceptual bar barriers, it's challenging enough to discuss this just in English. You can imagine how tough this is to try to translate it to other languages to understand what's going on over there. Right, so it's a, it's, it's a tough job to try to, try to do this, right? Paid versus unpaid. This is what we kind of saw in terms of additions making a difference between paid COI editing and unpaid COI editing. So six of them recognized a the difference between this, being paid or unpaid. Additions, eight did not. And then four, it was unclear. So about six of those 25 made a distinction between paid and unpaid. We saw that these seem to have no real guidelines regarding COI, which means it probably just falls back to the terms of use of the Wikimedia Foundation, but Japanese and Hungarian. And then partial guidelines, meaning they weren't really filled out very well as Vietnamese and Chinese Wikipedia. All right, so um, I don't think I'll go through all these because we're running a little bit short on time, and I'd really love to hear your feedback. Yeah, we're about halfway through. But I'm happy to share these slides in terms of the specifics for each of these different editions. And if you go back to look at our presentation from years past, you'll actually find very detailed descriptions of French and Italian because Christoph Henner and uh, Christian Cassoni were co-presenters of ours at Wikimania 2014, where they went through detailed case studies of collaboration uh, and COI. Okay, so I think I'll just kind of go to the conclusions that we're looking for. Um, is, would there be any interest in normalizing conflict of interest policies across different editions or among different languages? We're not sure. That's only a, something that you folks can answer, whether it makes sense to try to rationalize the policies um, across editions. Uh, there is, seems to be a big influence of the original COI guidelines in English Wikipedia to other editions. That just makes sense that you know, if you come later in the process, you might just simply borrow from the earlier folks who pioneered that area. 
And all these conclusions are still temporary. So we need feedback in these languages. So if you see these languages here, and it's either your language or you know a good friend or a Wikipedian that you can recommend to fill out the survey, please do, because we could really use those responses to fill out the survey. Um, and some of the, is anyone here on this list in the audience that helped us with the survey? Yes? All right, we have one person who helped us out who's here. Good, all right, so we have at least one person who helped us out. Um, and then this is the link, so if you go to bit.ly slash wp dash coi dash survey, that'll get you to our survey. Right, so feel free to take a picture of that. Uh, and then feel free to just leave me feedback on my user page or email me or go to Twitter or go to our Facebook group. No excuses, we got four ways to get in touch with me. Um, so I'd love to hear your feedback, whether some of the conclusions I showed you here don't really fit with your understanding of your language or some insights that you could give us to try to look at for understanding CY policies across different language editions. So what I'll do is come down here and get your questions or, or comments. All right, thanks. Um, Multi-chill. And please speak into the microphone because it gets us the best recording. Tell us who you are. So I'm Natasha, uh, uh, real name and uh, username. Um, I'm puzzled by the phrase that you said uh, made it to uh, nearly all other languages. So uh, if your aims outstand outweigh the aims of Wikipedia, then you stand in a conflict of interest. But how do you calculate that? You know, how do you weigh the weight? And I think that might be the reason why that language was put away and a new one came in. And if you look at the new language in English Wikipedia, at least, it starts to list specific things rather than this very vague guideline, right? And I think it originally was meant to be vague and that it didn't want to give you an exact measure of when you cross that line. It wanted you to kind of understand that if, if advancing your aims, you know, goes beyond or is not compatible with advancing Wikipedia's aims, then you stand in a conflict of interest. I kind of like that it was vague and that it kind of gave you the right direction, but our policy in English language Wikipedia has changed a little bit since then. Yeah, but you're right, it's intentionally vague. I think. Any other feedback or any episodes in, what, in the COI history of your editions that you think are notable that we should know of? Or are they too ugly for you to resurface? Yes, Derek. So I'm Derek Chan, I'm an admin on both the English Wikipedia and the Cantonese Wikipedia. So I think um, Cantonese isn't the only language with a sort of defer to a bigger project unspoken policy. So for example in, in Cantonese Wikipedia, where something is unclear in local policy or we just don't have a local policy, we will often cite or use either Chinese as an English Wikipedia as our binding policy unless something has been locally written. And um, I don't remember seeing anything COI-wise that's big enough to, to cause a big um, flared up controversy there. Um, but I presume if it did, we would be deferring to Chinese Wikipedia and English Wikipedia rules. And I think a lot of small language projects will have the same kind of defer to this language kind of stuff. Uh, my name is Liam Wyatt, uh, Witty Lama. And I wrote the uh, subject area experts exception to the English Wikipedia conflict of interest policy. Uh, so if you're an academic in this field, you are allowed to write about this field, and that's okay under our normal rules. Um, the conflict of interest problems or conflicts that I've seen related to what Martin says about did you look at other wikis, other projects, is where in outreach, particularly in GLAM, we will be encouraging, on the one hand, the institution to be sharing material and then helping to put it in an editathon or a multilingual campaign to uh, improve articles. So they want their username. We encourage them to upload as the institution to Commons their own files, take ownership, do it yourself. And then with that username, they then go on to different wikis and sometimes get blocked. For, for having that username of the institution. So it's not merely a question of do you have a conflict of interest policy or a username policy? And that's the, the similar, it's, it's a user colon National Museum of Art. That's allowed in Commons and not in English Wikipedia, but is on German Wikipedia. So you, it's the conflict of interest and naming policy across wikis, not just independently of each other. 
Um, so it's actually, now that I think of it, it's a question of naming policy ties into, and those, because those naming policies are about conflict of interest. Um, so you get the one account being said, this is best practice and this is worst practice for the same name in different projects. That's a great point. We didn't even think of that. Has anyone seen that issue of username in one domain, you move over to another wiki and it's like, ah, you're just not allowed to do anything, right, is a question. Well, I have a very nice example. I'm Gaston Blindy. I'm an admin in German language Wikipedia and on comments. Um, a quite uh, nice example, I think, is the Swiss National Library. That's not a quite, uh, uh, not a very small institution, not a very unimportant institution. And the Swiss Nas National Library has uh, an account, Swiss National Library, in German language Wikipedia, and they have successfully uploaded many, many images and comments. And because the account is named Swiss National Library, they are blocked in English Wikipedia. Uh, so this is an example of what you described. Uh, I, I think it's, it's a, a fitting example. And another example, uh, by, by the way, which might be interesting, uh, regarding German Wikipedia's policies. Um, there are uh, publishers, uh, big publishers, that have uh, accounts and are uploading book covers under a free license to comments. This is useful, of course, for the articles, but on the other hand, it's a kind of uh, advertising, you could say. So. Great point. So I think, at least on this one side, it might really be useful to normalize, or at least have some kind of special case for an institutional account, when they enter English Wikipedia and try to do something, there could be kind of a soft landing for them rather than, we don't allow those kind of accounts block, right? There might be something better than an aggressive stance to those situations, right? Um, let me just do one last thing here, if this works. Um, so let me just take a real quick show of hands. Can anyone here help us with Spanish? Is anyone here Spanish speaking help us with the survey? Excellent, thank you so much. Russian, are there any Russian folks? Can you help us with Russian? Good. Well, I had one of my students who knew Russian and tried to find like five or ten Russian editors, but no one ever responded. So you're our, you're our Russian contingent here. How about Portuguese? Anyone Portuguese who can help us? Or if you know of a Portuguese editor or admin who can help us out. Uh, Polish. Polish Wikipedia editors. Oh, no one from Polish. Uh, Dutch. Oh, come on. Dutch. Yeah. Martin, you got to help us out on this one. Um, I don't know why we had no Dutch respondents. There's so many folks we could have touched on it. Turkish or Hebrew? Hebrew, yes, thank you, thank you. Um, Swedish? Yes, great, thanks. Indonesian? Two! We have two from Indonesia, awesome, great. Finnish? Finnish? All right, we need to work on Finnish, and what was the other one? Uh, Portuguese, Polish, right, thank you. And then Norwegian? Oh, and Norwegian too. Okay, great. So we need those languages um, in our representation. Oh, we have a few minutes left. So any other questions? Yes. Uh, yes, this is uh, Masaya from from France. Uh, I just want. I wonder if you have met the issue, issue or question or about uh, paid translation. Or oh, not that I have heard of, our, of any issue like this. But just to know. Paid translation. That's a great question. I, I haven't personally. Anyone has raised or run to the issue of paid translations? We have experienced an issue. We have a chronic paid translation. No issue. At WikiMed, yeah. Wiki Project Med Foundation. So, so Rubrik, um, uh, they basically are a translation company. They have access to ask it sometimes a year. They're looking for interesting things they can have their employees do and they still need to pay them rather than just having them have to feed up. So they come to Wikipedia when, for example, they translate their Ebola or Rumble into the 2019 of South Africa. Interesting. So this is uh, James Heilman, head of Wiki Project Med Foundation, and you said that. So in that sense, the paid side is somewhat removed from an incentive to slant an article one way or another. So in that sense, the paid is not so problematic, right? So there, you know, there is one you can volunteer work, it's like getting a donation from a company. Right. Um, yeah. You know, and what is that organization you mentioned again? Rubric, and what, what does Rubric do? They do translation. Okay, so, so, so their bread and butter is to be neutral in their work anyway, yeah, right? They right. Will, will know their, their job is to translate what they give them. Right. So they're all professional translators. You give them whatever you want translated, they translate it. If it's PR, they 
POV to start with, they'll make their POV. <laughs> for better, for worse. Yeah. <laughs> garbage in, garbage out, right? Exactly. <laughs> Good. Um, any other questions or comments? Yes, yeah. Anter. Tell us who you are. Uh, Anter, France. <laughs> um, I wondered, uh, in the past we discussed several times uh, the possibility to have a sort of certification of people working in this area. Do you know if that progressed? And did you, at some point, make a sort of um, uh, survey on which companies has have been created by Wikipedians, I mean by people who have been there for a long time and working on this? That's a great question. So one of the things that came up, I think, at the first 2014 discussion, I think, we had in London was, would there be an interest in a, what, whether we call it certification or even someone who is a conflicted editor or a paid editor on Wikipedia, but is disclosing, might they be able to go through some kind of online course or certification or some kind of training and they can put that on the user page saying, I passed level one or level two certification as understanding Wikipedia's rules, right? So it doesn't mean that they can do whatever they want, but it signals to Wikipedians that this person says they have a certain level of knowledge about our policies. I think that's not a bad idea. I don't think anyone's really pushed it forward. 